You know, Jamie, this coming up is a question that has plagued the breakfast table for generations. And that would be whether buttered toast falls buttered side up or down more often. Exactly. You know, Jamie, it is a truth universally acknowledged that a man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a myth to bust. Well, it has been an absolutely capital year for busting myths. Indeed, most agreeable. More tea, sir. Thank you, I'll get it. But it's I down, down again? Well, that sounds like something we need to test, and I have an idea. Well, I have an idea too, actually. What say we actually go off, build two separate rigs, get them together, and see which one comes up with a better result? That sounds like a capital idea. Excellent. At long last, this centuries-old breakfast brain teaser is going to be put to the test. But why simply drop buttered toast when you can build an over-elaborate machine to do it? I love the Rube Goldberg approach. It's always funny to me to bring in pneumatics and other sciences to bear on something like toast falling off of the table. Adam goes over the top with a pneumatic device which mimics breakfast table mishaps. There are many ways toast could fall, but the most common it would seem to me is toast accidentally getting brushed off a table like that. Now the question is how to come up with a mechanical model that can repeat that type of action. And what I've got here is a top-loading toast tosser. Toast tosser is right. His solenoid valve is way too powerful. <laughs> Now, there's a problem with my rig right off the bat, which is it's just throwing the toast like a Frisbee, like that. I was trying to think of something a more, slightly more random that would brush it off the table like that. Adam recalibrates his rig, so instead of launching toast across the kitchen, it recreates the classic brush off the table scenario. <sighs> the Toast Tosser 2.0. First, he runs a control experiment with unbuttered toast. They're all starting top side up. Top side's labeled. Down. Down. He's hoping for a random sample down. where the toast lands top side up and down in equal numbers. We're showing totally consistently that a piece of toast just brush off, does one flip, and lands top side down. With a certain pressure. With a certain pressure. So I'll bet if we went to, you know, a thousand restaurants and shot a thousand people tipping toast off, that it would probably be pretty close to this. That's what my intuition says. But it doesn't help. That is answering the question about people's proclivities to tipping toast. And the aim is to eliminate people from the toast dropping process. So Adam now wants a less naturalistic model where the toast is suspended in midair and then dropped without any human intervention. In terms of the question, does toast, when it's buttered, prefer to fall to one side or the other, I think that's a question that's much better answered by Jamie's ring. Which, as you'll see, is a kind of a spring thing. There you go. But first, it's race day at time. Back at the Mythbusters workshop, Jamie's rig is ready to test if toast lands butter side down. Okay, so I'm always going to put the top facing to this side. Facing which way? This that way, way yeah. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. <laughs> Ow, it hurts to laugh. <laughs> well, I didn't know the rig wasn't assembled. So you want to mark it now? <laughs> Once again, they first test out dry toast to get a random sample without butter. Down. It's not exactly a rip-roaring reset, is it? You know that I'm not inclined to overbuild a rig and when it's untested. I know, I know. I know that at the end of the day you'll get the job done. Down. There's something about this rig. Down. Down that's building in a bias. Down. And they suspect the spring action is to blame. I think we need to stop testing with this thing. Right. Because right now we've got three up and seven down. Okay. We're way, out, we're way outside of a random sample. We want to come up with a test that with unbuttered toast gives us a fully random 
uh, uh, statistical distribution of toast falling up or down. So, unable to provide a random sample with unbuttered toast, both the trapdoor dropper bite the Mythbusters dust. You know, Adam, I don't think either of our rigs really got to the bottom of this. Yeah, you know, I think your rig had it a little better than mine. Yours was an empirical model. Mine was a naturalistic model. I think we need to build a rig that has absolutely no bias at all in terms of how it drops it. Well, let's just build my rig, but a better one. I think that's a great idea, and I think we should also actually automate the whole process. Let's get an automatic toaster like they have at the deli. Maybe you could put together a conveyor belt for it. We'll put a thermometer to make sure they're all the same temperature when they go. Buttering station. I mean, let's automate as much of this as we can to eliminate all the variables. All right. We're going to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> Once and for all. Adam and Jamie join forces to build the most elaborate toast dropping test rig of all time. Probably going to cut these down, actually, way down. <laughs> A toast dropper. Who would have thought? Oh, it looks good. Should work. I'm going to make a little wedge for this so that it, you know, activates them both at the same time. It's another Rube Goldbergian device. Pneumatic powered and hands free. It should drop toast perfectly level and consistently each time, thus eliminating any human factor in cheating the toast buttered side up or buttered side down when it drops. There's our piece of toast held innocently. And when I want to drop it, I push this button and it drops. It's kind of surreal to have spent so much time and effort on a machine that just drops pieces of toast perfectly straight. I think we've blown the whole toast dropping mechanism field wide open. The toast dropper is done to a T. All that's needed now is a toast transporter. This is a toast conveyor belt. And while it's not entirely necessary, it'll add a certain level of complexity to our device that, uh, that we like. Unnecessary? Over elaborate? Sounds like fun. Never in the realm of science or breakfast has so much effort gone into perfecting the art of making and dropping toast. One, two, three, boop, go! And it drops it. The new rig is ready. First, the control test without butter. When the toast gets to me for test number one, I'll just be putting an X across the top of it, putting it in our toast dropper, and activating the drop and logging on this piece of paper whether or not it's landed up or down. Okay, so 20 slices unbuttered. Correct. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Adam limbers up, and it's game on. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here comes piece number one. Down. Next. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Next. <laughs> The rig runs like clockwork, yeah. bringing on one of Jamie's schoolgirl giggling fits. <laughs> this is going to be an intense day, I'll tell you that. It's going to be like that episode of Lucy, you know, with the chocolates. <laughs> Next. <laughs> I notice you're not doing anything. Actually. I'm loading the toast. That's oh. my job. Down. Next. This is the last slice of our test. We're showing a perfect statistical distribution up. And down. And down. We had uh, 11 landed up and 13 landed down. That's close enough. At long last, a truly random sample. I'd say that's pretty much what I'd expect in terms of any kind of random statistical anomaly of heads up, heads down. I think it can mean only one thing. It's time to butter the toast. It's time to butter the toast. Okay, this is it. Buttered test. You ready? Oh, I'm ready, baby. I've got my butter standing by. Okay, we're fully loaded. 200 degrees. On deck. In the field of buttered toast dropping. On deck. This is poetry in motion. You all right down there? I'm fine. On deck. These guys are cooking. On deck. The results, if anything, are showing the toast 
preferred to land, prefers to land buttered slide up. Or does it? Last one coming through. Throughout the ages, millions have wondered. Now, the waiting is almost over. Amazing. We had um, 12 up, 12 down, 24 slices of bread, just like the first test. No difference at all. Myth busted. For the answer of off a table, does toast prefer butter up or butter down? I'd say it does not prefer either. There's still stacks of bread in stock, so why retire a perfectly good rig? This is Mythbusters after all. So they go for broke and take to the roof. It's 27 feet, 5 inches to the toast drop. The first test we're going to do is unbuttered toast. We're going to do 50 slices. Then we're going to do buttered toast, 50 slices. It's a sample of 100 pieces of bread. It should be very definitive. If you lie awake wondering what happens when toast drops off a roof, your sleepless nights are almost over. Toast rig is ready. Bread is loading. Let's do some science. Toast on deck. Here it comes. First one to away. On toast on deck. Here it comes. Bombs away. It's starting to sound like a techno song. <laughs> toast on deck. Watch out, falling toast. Bombs away. <laughs> toast on deck. Here comes another one. Bombs away. Toast on deck. Bombs away. Toast on deck. Bombs away. You're doing great, Carrie. Thank you. You know, I went to college for this. <laughs> Bombs away. Jamie, as soon as we're done with this one, let's check our results and go right to the butter test. You got it. Here she comes. Toast on deck. The last one. Bombs away. All right, Scotty, what are the results? OK, out of 48 slices, 26 landed face up. So that's really close to statistically even-handed. Exactly. For a while, it was exactly 50%. All right, well, you guys ready for the butter test? I am so ready for butter. I love butter. Give us about two minutes to get all the pats ready, and we'll go. Time to butter up. Initiating the butter sequence. Butter sequence is initiating. First piece. Away. Butter side up. Away. Up. Butter up. You're watching history in the making. This must be what the Wright brothers felt like, or possibly Edison with his light bulb. Away. With each toast drop, the tension Away. mounts. <laughs> What's the breakdown so far? Out of 17 drops, the butter has landed up 12 times. So butter up is winning. OK, my toast, my toast always lands butter side up. Last slice. Here we go. Last slice is a charm. And away. Let's just throw stuff on him now. Come on. Stop making messes. You're not going to clean it up. That's one messy sidewalk, but it's a small price to pay for a scientific discovery. So, so? On the dry toast, the X landed up 26 times out of 48. On the buttered toast, the butter side landed up 29 times out of 48. Adam, I actually saw what was going on here. The ones that were landing butter side up were ones that had been kind of pressed in a little bit because it forms a dish in the, in the, yep. uh, the bread. And just like a leaf coming off a tree, uh, if it comes off neutral and it's curved, it's, it, it doesn't want to flo float down like this. It wants to go like that. I totally agree with that assessment. I saw the same thing from up there. So I, I guess the thing is, is that uh, if you really want to ensure, in general, your toast landing buttered side up or down, we can tell you that you should butter with a good vigor and that resultant bowl will make your toast generally fall buttered side up. When brushed off a table, toast shows a tendency to flip once, then land top side down. But without human interference, when dropped from midair, it's a different story. In none of our testing, no matter what we did, we discovered no statistical predilection towards buttered side down. That's busted. <laughs> busted. Okay. You guys going to wrap it up? I'm going to go. 